Um, when it comes to the media, the media has moved from shock to revelation, a word with deep religious meaning, but what has been revealed exactly? Now, throughout the age of Trump, the American mainstream news media has sounded increasingly like a broken record, repeating, repeatedly um, describing Donald Trump's innumerable misdeeds as unimaginable or unthinkable or shocking. Now, this approach clearly attracts clicks and advertising dollars, but by comparison, Joe Biden is fucking boring. His his um his administration has been generally has been generally competent and free of scandal, but per, um, perversely that's one of the main reasons why the mainstream media has turned against him. Now with the house with the house January sixth committee hearings, the media circus has played out true to form, adding the term revelation to its um, recirculating vocabulary for describing Donald Trump and his and his confederates, and their undocument and their documented crimes. Now in reality, there is nothing truly shocking about the description of Trump's um, misconduct. And the revelations emerging from the committee hearings are hardly biblical epiphanies. Now, this conclusion should be obvious for media professionals who are paid to follow the, pub the public um, matters. Now, Donald Trump is utterly transparent and and, um, and unpredictable, and um and has and he has un unapologetic and, and sorry, and has been unapologetically been that way for all of his public life. Um, now, Trump's squatting and his 2021 failed coup attempt and the imminent threat of his 2024 squatter um, campaign run have amplified to the extreme everything that's wrong with him. Um, and more importantly, with the culture that spans his fascist movement and political cult, cult sycophantic followers. As, um, as squatter, Trump committed acts of democide that killed at least a million Americans throughout his negligent, if not criminal, response to the coronavirus pandemic. He repeatedly threatened, well before November, November 2016, not to accept the outcome of any election if he was not the winner. He has repeatedly demonstrated, well, um, he has repeatedly demonstrated white supremacist views and fascist tendencies both in his public policies and in his personal life. Mental health professionals have concluded that he is likely a sociopath, if not a psychopath, as well as a, as a malignant narcissist and a compulsive liar. The reason why that he's repeatedly put up down as a compulsive liar is because in his four years of squad, and he told over thirty thousand lies. Um, Trump was twice impeached for a variety of crimes surrounding his attempts to subvert the twenty twenty election culminated in acts of de facto treason and seditious conspiracy around the attempted coup of 2021. He conducts himself like a mafia boss using violence, intimidation, fraud, and other antisocial behavior to get and keep power as a way to enrich himself in his inner circle. Um, at his Klan rallies and other um, um, hate, hate, um, hate gatherings, Trump continues to incite political violence and has moved closer to calling for a white-on-black race war, given that context there is nothing truly surprising about Trump's words or any deeds. While Trump is while Trump is cruel, vicious, scheming, and small-minded and, and an asshole, in his own twisted way, his an, uh, in his mind he thinks he's an honest and transparent virgin, which he's ne which he's not. Now the ringmasters, barkers, and star performers of the mainstream news media circus are not actually surprised or shocked by any revelations about Trump's vile behavior. And that is as true now as it was before the January 6th hearings began. To some degree, the performance of such emotions is seen as expected or obligatory. And it's a way to lure the public into the tent with the promise of some great um, um, reveal. In a recent conversation with former Republican Congressman Joe Walsh, um, this is what he had to say about the media circus. He he tends to believe that most of them are not shocked or surprised. They're saying such things for effect and ratings. And you're talking about corporate news media. There are things that they're going to allow to be said and things that are off limits. The host and guests and reporters you're talking about are not stupid people. But if you're, if you're a Republican, you are. Uh, they're not shocked by Trump and the Repu and the repugs and all the bad things that they do. So there is a range of reasons and why so many members of the mainstream media, the what we call the hope peddlers, the happy pill sellers, and professional smart people, um, essentially keep repeating that Donald Trump's crimes are shocking and unbelievable revelations that no one could have imagined. Well, I could have. Now, first of all, the major corporate media is part of the system and not outside it, and it is inevitably aligned with power for prominent media figures to admit that the system is, is a profound crisis. Um, as epitomized by the rise of Trump and the tens of millions of people who voted for him and a major political party that has embraced fascism is effectively verbatim. Um, a central element of maintaining the fiction that American democracy and its in institutions are strong is to advance the narrative that Trump and the other Republican fascists are, outli are outliers who remain unthinkable as the world, as the, in the world's greatest democracy. Now, there are other um, institutional and cultural, um, cultural rules at work. A successful career in the mainstream news media, um, it requires not getting too far ahead of the target target audience and public opinion as as, um, as conventional wisdom perceives such things. So being a professional moderate or a centrist tends to be lucrative 
to be a lucrative um, career track, and and feigning shock or surprise in an effort to um, appear relatable is an important element of that pose. Now, in this context, telling uncomfortable or frightening truths about American society, which of necessity which of necessity may reflect the complicity of the American people at large, is to invite uh, is to is to invite career suicide. Now, as a practical matter, one is expected to read the room and stay close to the purported views and ideals of the average American rather than telling inconvenient truths and it, at inopportune moments by implication. The mainstream media is expected to lead the public to the truth gently as if telling children about death rather than speaking to them plainly like adults. And that kind of mass in, 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 infanta, um, infantilism is one of the principal ways by which fascism and other authoritarian systems take hold and spread across a society. Um, there, there are psychological explanations as well, and to pretend that Trump and his cabal and the larger Republican fascist movement is any way shocking or surprising is a defensive behavior rooted in fear. In a series of interviews for Salam, there have, there have been talks with people, and they've asked leading psychologists and other mental health professionals about exactly this question. Why are so many Americans, especially members of the media and political classes, in, are in such denial about Donald Trump and the Republican fascist movement, and more than six years after this emerged... Why do they keep pretending to be surprised by the obvious? And this is what Dr. Justin Frank had to say. They want to stop thinking about it. Those people who email you because they don't want you to talk about Donald Trump are afraid of confronting their inner circle. They do not want to face who they are deep, um, who they are deep down inside. Such people also don't want to think about the other real nature of America and that we also have fantasies of violence and revenge. It's a very scary thing to be forced to confront our, our own violent and destructive impulse. That is especially true in this country because many Americans don't want to confront the fact that it is their fellow Americans who are making such threats. It is a deep, deep type of denial and fantasy. This also explains why so many people in the American news media won't talk about Trump's threats of violence and killing and destruction. It scares them too, so they normalize or even dismiss the deadly seriousness of his threats. This is what Dr. Lance Dodes, Dodes had to say, and he offered this insight. Most of us would like to believe that there are um, benevolent powerful authorities at work in the world, leaders who are loving and kind. In this country, many of us were brought up to believe that the leaders of the country are fine people who are looking out for us, which Trump didn't. But we want, but we want to believe this. When a truly evil person comes in to seize power and the country and the free press, and, and we were unable to react appropriately, and we still see people who are being shocked by this. Dr. Mark Goldston also made similar observations. The reason they're shocked is because a person cannot be Partial, um, partially a sociopath, sociopathic or narcissistic. It's a slippery road when you allow sociopaths or narcissists to ride over um, to ride over you unchecked. The denial and giving such people the benefit of the doubt just encourages them. Now, people on the Democratic side, the Democrats, are also afraid to acknowledge dark parts of their personalities, such as anger or rage. Such feelings fill them with shame, and therefore they deny they deny themselves. They deny to themselves that Donald Trump and other such sociopaths and narcissists are so dangerous. Um, after the, the after the eighth January sixth committee hearing, apparently the last of this eventful summer, we talked to Doc. Um, basically, somebody had talked to Doctor Frank if he had further, if he had further, further thoughts on the continuing narrative about revelations, and he responded by email stating this: the media, whether it, whether it will be whether it's right wing conservative or progressive, and, and he has one psychological characteristic in common. Denial. Denial is a complex defense. The right wing fits, fits, fits in this most common definition. They basically deny reality, or facts, and even a perception. Foe, den foe denies the fact of the attempted coup on January 6, 2021. They claim it didn't happen, they say. Um, the conservative mainstream media, like the major TV networks, deny the, pop the palpable dangers of the coup. They deny the fragility of our own government institutions. They are more the, um, the more progressive media, CNN and MSNBC, have changed to have changed to some extent because of the hearings. They did they once denied Trump's central responsibility for the coup, and then they denied it, and then they denied its destructiveness, and that it could still happen another way, by electing Ron Death Death Santis. That pretending to be shocked, uh, the pretending to be shocked is a pretend is pretend is a pretending to themselves, not simply grandstanding. It feeds their need to deny responsibility. Not all media, from Foe to MSNBC and everything else, they're owned by large corporations. They ultimately, they ultimately deaden a fundamental need that's shared in some degree by all Americans, the need to pursue truth despite a conflict and need to deny it. Um, 
Now, reporters, commentators, pundits, and other people who have a public voice and use words for a living have a, have a great responsibility in a democracy to help the public understand complex matters so they can, in turn, make responsible decisions about policies and um, about politics and society, and part of this responsibility is to speak truth to power, and it requires using the clearest and most precise language. We should note that the root meaning of revelation is to gain information or knowledge through divine or supernatural mean. A revelation in that sense is supposed to be a great truth that is potentially life-changing or word-changing, as in the book of Revelation, the hallucinatory, the hallucinatory final text in the New Testament. Now, when someone claims that public evidence regarding Donald Trump's crimes and generally evil behavior are those of his confederates in the larger Republican fascist movement is a revelation, that should provoke a, a moment of critical self-reflection. Is this actually a revelation? If it is, have we modified our behavior and expectations accordingly? And what follows from this revelation in terms of my responsibilities to the public? Now, responsible citizens who strive to live in, to live in an ethical and morally grounded life and, and, uh, and who are committed to secular human, um, humanism and overall decency should never stop being outraged at, all, at any injustice. But to pretend that such injustice or related crimes against society are shocking or surprising when they are not is in many ways to do the work of in inquity um, rather than confronting it. Now, perpetual shock and surprise, especially when feigned, can um, when feigned can lead to um, it can lead to um, learned helpfulness, helplessness, past um, passivity, and surrender when bold pro and when bold proactive actions are required. Now, saving American democracy from the Republican fascists and the larger right wing, if this is possible, will require a fearless commitment to clarity and speech and action from both the news media and the American people. So if you like the video, you can give the video a like and subscribe to my channel, RBW King. You can also hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified when a new video comes out. And if you want to support my work even further, you can donate to my Patreon link, which you can find in the about section of YouTube. And for just a little as a few bucks a month, your donation can help go a long way. And thanks for listening.